Brokeback Mountain, but it's Frieza and Goku, and they're kissing by the shed. There, that's that's the joke. Try harder. They're on a horse. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ballin' Out Super. Super. I'm your host, Jeremy Hammond. With me, as always, are my co-hosts, Katie Rose Leon. I'm so glad it's Sunday in the anime room, but happy Royal Rumble to you and yours. (laughs) And Alex Patak. Oh, I'm English, Ken Griffey Jr. What's what's like the cricket equivalent of play ball? Snatcher. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us this week, special guest live via satellite from Jolly Old <laughs> Ollie Thorne from Philosophy Tube. Hello, it is an absolute pleasure to be on the show. Uh, I believe am I the first English guest you've had? You are, I think, yeah. I can't think yes. of anybody else that we would have had. Listen to those queen's horns. I think the only <laughs> the only English it's, person we know in real life is uh, uh, Dominic Fogarty. Yeah, who, which while he's a strong Fighter Z player, he will and, not hang out with us. An oh. extremely strong human being. You got to <laughs> see the man's thighs. They're like Frieza's thighs, <laughs> which we've all agreed are... Quite promiscuous. <laughs> what? Frieza's thighs? Am I going insane here? <laughs> Did everyone watch this episode? They're wide, and they can probably squat so much, yeah. and he probably goes all the way down, which is so important for form. It's- <laughs> People Definitely don't is. follow. Yeah. He has impressive legs considering he's been in hell for so long and presumably there is not a gym. In a fetal shape inside yeah. of a cocoon. He should be yeah. uh, like... Atrophied. Atrophied, yeah. Okay, okay, but you can resistance train inside of the cocoon if you're pushing out and against then just the flexing cocoon. the muscle against the cocoon. Mm. Like kegels, but in a cocoon. Yeah. <laughs> kegels. <laughs> Do you think that Frieza was managed to hustle Benoit balls into hell <laughs> in some sort because like maybe that's why he, they love Dragon Ball so much they're actually a Kegel tool they're a Kegel tool when you get them all together that's it's it's all how do we this is this it? summoning the dragon is pulling them why out. I have more questions does Frieza ever do kettlebells because I've heard they're the most kinetic exercise, but rarely do you see the raw bulk you're getting through raw lifting. Alex, you miss lifting so much. I know, and my <laughs> elbow's still fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Frieza's okay. been on the burpees. That's, that's how you just get shredded. Oh, just absolutely yeah. shredded. Just doing loads of burpees. You're slimming down, but you're getting up <laughs> in your in your... What's the word? Oh my head, mind? brain. Cut this out. <laughs> head, head, brain, space. Ladies and gentlemen, casual Alex is back. Casual Alex hasn't drank his whole <laughs> cup of coffee yet. Okay, we're going okay. to coffee. Let's switch focus here. Ollie, we like to start the podcast off by talking to our guest about Dragon Ball and anime and what your experience with them are. Uh, were you ever a Dragon Ball fan? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I was. Uh, I was hugely into Dragon Ball Z as a kid uh, mm-hmm. and into GT. Uh, that was very much my gateway drug into anime. Uh, as a young teen on Toonami, I also got really big into Tenshi Muyo Ryooki. Yes! Yes, I know. I I've also been watching. horny show. <laughs> I've been watching the reboot AI Tenshi Muyo, which is trash. It's so Have you bad. seen it? Kate? Um, I've seen it advertised. I never watched it, but like the whole reason you love Tenshi Muyo is all the wonderful personalities in his harem. Um, you know, you got the brainy uh, little washu. You got the uh, badass space pirate Ryooki. You got, I mean, um, fuck, it's been a while. Uh, okay? And you got the princesses and stuff like that. But in the new one, I'm pretty sure it's just like two space cops, right? Oh, the two space cops from the original no they're new space new cops. space cops so no, they've added new, more space cops, cops to the show the people <laughs> but they all they all gang are back ryoko's back they've got the old voice actors petraea birchard's voicing ryoko again oh cool she's so good i've even got her book like that's how into her work i am oh damn <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I got hugely into uh, DBZ and GT and, and Tenchi Muyo Ryoki. And then I, later I got into uh, Tenchi Muyo again in university and I discovered that the versions that had been shown on British TV when I was a kid had been heavily censored. Yep. So I was watching it again as an adult, like, this is a lot hornier than I remember. <laughs> I had a moment like that because like, I was really late bloomer. Um, so I didn't really get that a lot of anime was super sexual and that was like my favorite show for a while just because I loved all the women in it and I have this very distinct memory of taking a business trip with my father and there was a um, anime shop in LA and I was like yay I get to go buy merch and the guy at the shop's like what's your favorite show and I was like Tenchi Moyo and the only thing they had was like a really uh, explicit pinup poster of all of them in bikinis. Like those tiny little ones yeah, in, in anime pictures that are just like <laughs> string, essentially. And the my, tiniest little triangle. And my nipple. supportive therapist mother was like, Katie, is this something that interests you? And I was <laughs> like... <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, maybe on the weekends! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I got into it, but I, I, I stopped uh, watching anime when I was about uh, 16, uh, because that was basically when I started having sex. Um, my health faltered. And I... Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> when my health faltered, I had to stop watching anime. <laughs> no, no, it's when, when I started just, like, uh, like having a serious girlfriend, I remember her I remember her saying to me one day, she was like, uh, you know, I, I think I'd like to lose my virginity to you. And one of my first thoughts was, I should probably stop watching anime. <laughs> Because <laughs> now I'm a man. <laughs> Today we are men. I have to get a large leather briefcase. I don't have the time. <laughs> I'll take that picture of Vegeta off the inside of my locker. That's, that's like wonderful. the most realist life markers I think I've ever heard on that's, our show. I feel like that's the story that we're always trying to get out of people that we never quite get. That's the one Alex is trying to get at least. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop any moment now so I can have more sex. <laughs> so, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I've been trying to get this riff in for a bit, and it's just going to be more irrelevant than it already is. If you think Tenchi Muyo AI is lewd, you should see South American Tenchi Muyo, Tenchi Muyo ai ai ai. All right, great. Let's move on. We got it in. It's no, in no, there. My my voyage is my voyage is in lewd anime continued because I got um I got back into anime when I went to university because I dated a girl there who was really into it mm. and she got me into uh Kill la Kill and uh, Attack on Titan and then to my shame I also watched the entirety of Monster Musume which is about as lewd as it gets without just being indecent. So. I don't know that one. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you the setup and then reveal the twist. The setup of Monster Musume is that uh like monster people are all real, like half snake people, centaurs, mermaids, all half animal people, they're all real. And they all get discovered. And to facilitate better cooperation between humanity and the monster people, everybody gets like assigned a buddy. So you get a new flatmate and they might be a centaur or something, right? <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, so the story the revolves around this guy who gets five new flatmates um, and they're all different kinds of monster people, right? Um, but the the twist is that before it became an anime, Monster Musume was just a straight up hentai. So obviously, all of his new flatmates are ridiculously hot girls, and they all they all want to have sex with him. But because having sex with animal people is still against the law, if he actually fucks any of them, he goes to prison, and that's what? the whole setup of the anime. <laughs> <laughs> and it's terrible. But it's terrible. What? I'm never looking into this. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's don't. an incredible I'm not premise. writing the name of this anime down into a notebook for later. <laughs> I feel like that's a really good commentary about the imprisonment male feels about their desires, you know? <laughs> My Just penis like... is a cage. <laughs> I know that you're into body pillows because you've got the long wet boy, and you can actually buy. Uh, can, you can actually on. get like giant long snake girl body Here, pillows. Here, you guys, now as well. you guys hold the fort down. Yeah. Jeremy has been living Monster Mizume with his long wet roommate body pillow. I know. He just thinks that's chill. Okay. Oh, we have I, him. I haven't seen him. In Do you a want while. to put him on the mic? <laughs> <laughs> His torso is just so long. Oh, it's the goggles not. are such a nice touch. <laughs> I think in real life it would just look off-putting. Uh, folks at home, uh, this is a non-visual medium, so uh, what we've done is uh, pulled out our long, wet boy, Haruka, uh, from, from his closet prison. <laughs> it's very cruel of you to keep him in a closet. It feels very flowery. I know, but people just keep coming over to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Stop having such a delightful home life. You know, you know Become dysfunctional like I am and fill it with snakes. 
Isn't it kind of like uh, uh, terrifying in a, a existential way where you have this long, wet boy and he's like just looking at you lovingly and then you turn him over instead of an ass, it's just his face again? <laughs> <laughs> and his name. Oh, wow, it is. It's just more more of him. Yeah, he yep. just leaves you wanting more. <laughs> and the same face, too. It's not even like a different version of the face. It's not even a different angle, no. no. That's probably why it was on sale. I actually tried watching <laughs> Watching this show not too long ago, I watched maybe the first ten minutes of an episode, and I was like, "Whoa, this is maybe too spicy." <laughs> like you got pressured in. You would not like Monster Musume. <laughs> it's not for you. It's for like lonely teenage girls. I know. <laughs> it's not for you, it's Jeremy. It's not for you. Stop colonizing Haruka. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of it's our. He's appropriated s- it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's my that's my voyage through anime. Is like DBZ was very much like a, the the gateway drug, and then I got into more hardcore stuff. Took a few years off, but then got sucked back in at university. Did, wow. So did you not watch any more after that, or it was just so uh, out of control that you you only feel comfortable leaving it at Monster <laughs> Mizumi? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I kind of kept up a casual weekend warrior on the anime since since university. But yeah, because um, I because I got into uh, Attack on Titan through this girl at uni, and it's still going on. So I'm still following that. Um, and oh, what do you think Dragon about Ball the Super. recent developments in Attack on Titan? The triple parentheses what? Attack on Titan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm I'm, just, I'm on tenterhooks waiting for the next one. Um, isn't oh. it? It comes out this year. Do you know about the anti-Semitic comments? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out the creator of Attack on Titan revealed basically that the Titans, the giant <sighs> monsters, are basically goose. Uh, like they're <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, I'm so sorry to do this to you, but this is my position at saltiest woman in America to just ruin everything for everyone. I mean, yeah, the parallels are so clear. <laughs> like, ob- yeah, like obviously. What? <laughs> I think is that no one would have extrapolated that if he didn't have an interview and tell everyone. <laughs> <sighs> it's like well, such a further at gone. least it's on hiatus, so I can just not get back into it. That's another one that I'm crossing off the list. Listen, like, I still watch a lot of problematic stuff. It's just like you gotta pick and choose. You gotta live your life sometimes. Aaron, Aaron, you're cancelled. <laughs> I watch that one Nazi movie of the Olympics every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite anime. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Triumph of the Will, is that it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, write in if the movie is Triumph of the Will. And of course, I still watch uh, Harry Potter movies despite J.K. Rowling telling us that Hagrid actually hated Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was that really weird scene in the fourth one where he just sits down for 15 minutes straight and just like slags off even mildly, <laughs> mildly socialist policies. Yeah, it's really, really bizarre. Like, There's that scene where Voldemort is just uh, too kind to Hamas. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the plot. <laughs> Mr. Potter, what are your opinions on marginal tax rates? <laughs> I just feel I could have done a better job under private direction. (laughs) That's a reference to Michael Dell. Great. Thanks for listening, Michael. (laughs) Welcome to our accessible podcast. Yeah, great. Let's round this lightning bolt. (laughs) Should we uh, get into the episode? Skippity, skippity, school, everyone. It's me, Mary Lollipops, the little girl from down the way whose arms are lollipops. Every day, owls try to peck at my hands and break them with their unmerciful beaks. But that's why I beat owls to death every day if I can, and I eat them in an owl sandwich at lunchtime. This is as good a time as any day as to you support the Ballin' Out Super Podcast on Patreon. They sure would appreciate it, just like I appreciate the extinction of all owls. The title of this episode is Most Heinous, Most Evil, Frieza's Wild Rampage. (laughs) I love an explanation point. The most English title of an episode. (laughs) Most Heinous. (laughs) Most Heinous. (laughs) 
foul. Was that like, <laughs> yeah, most most crimes in England are are something most foul. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We have m- most foul all the time. We still do that, yeah. yeah. I, I, by the way, I've just got to go outside into a cobbled street into a red phone box and make a call to the Queen. The title does feel very newsy. It's like, extra, extra, most heinous, most evil, Freezer's on one again. <laughs> Freezer uses Freezer's back on feet. his bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, if you guys remember, Jeremy, I had to catch you up before we uh, Alex got here, but... Um, you know, Freeze is back in action, but guess what? We got a sneaky universe, and uh, they have a little sneak, sneak, sneak attack, <laughs> and Goku, in a rare moment of responsibility, is like, man, we just don't got time. <laughs> they have to go to the dimensional tournament, which is going to start, and he has to bring his worst enemy, Frieza, to the tournament, because they said they'd carpool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why Frieza can only come out in a room full of candles. <laughs> why can't they just drop him where he needs to go? Is that something is that what they had to do? Was room yeah, full last candles? episode, they like went to Baba and then uh, gave her a snack. Uh-huh. And then Baba left and brought Frieza back in a room full of candles. Then all the candles went out because they didn't want to be in the same room as Frieza because of some comments he's made. <laughs> And then Frieza appears from the gates of hell and uh, just immediately has a heated gaming moment. And that's where we are here. All right, great. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised that Baba's not more in demand for this sort of resurrection. Yeah. I'm surprised that wasn't a cue. And you could just ask her and she'll do it? What is she yeah. up to? How, how expensive are melons? That doesn't seem like a very pricey offering. She just has dementia and is just like, I brought you a melon. I love them. She's like, those are currency in our society. <laughs> like it, it used to be- Honestly, that whole thing's really unclear. So, <laughs> so as we know, um, Frieza went full golden piss Frieza. Uh, right out the gate and Goku is a little bit like you might want to save that for the big show and he's like I am on one yeah. <laughs> it's always the big show for Frieza <laughs> uh, and so we meet like last time we just saw the little woof woof doggy man floating in the sky but right. we didn't get to meet his cool friends uh, who are definitely from a different TV show I want to say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something. Voice They're just by- the shy guys from Super Mario Bros. That's what oh. they are. They're shy guys. I think they look like um uh like Rita Repulsa putty types. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I can see that. Mm. I also was thinking maybe like uh, if Oogie Boogie had like a Warriors type gang. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing they have in common is that they're crass <laughs> and won't give you the information you want. I was getting like a real Bobcat Golfway vibe off of all of them. Anyway, yeah, they're like, hello, we are the people here to kill you and we're from Edgelord Universe. <laughs> we were big in the It 80s. doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to give you this random advice. Weapons are melee, and also suck a dick, snowflakes. And also, Zoe Quinn is a bitch. <laughs> Enjoy my technique where I make you watch season three of Family Guy. <laughs> Wait till you hear my opinions about the Titans and Attack on Titan. <laughs> Surprise, I'm pro! <laughs> um, wait, the one line that they say here that I thought was very funny and I want to make sure it gets on the episode <laughs> is that the, the minions are explaining who they are and they're like, we're not from some Namby Bambi universe. <laughs> <laughs> we like throw mud and stuff. We're fucked. <laughs> they literally said, we're up from a universe that loves low blows. <laughs> we're from a universe where we throw rocks at trains. <laughs> Our universe is uncucked. <laughs> how, how would you design a universe based on underhandedness? <laughs> That's a very Kantian question. Like, you can't think about it too much. This is just like. Yeah, then it becomes like a World War II caricature, and you're like. Mm. <laughs> you go to drink water, the water turns into piss, because fuck you! <laughs> or maybe it's like more like a Mountain Dew X game ad. <laughs> In your face! But I guess if the universes have only just found out about the other universes, then it's kind of a realistic portrayal that immediately everyone's like, well, all the other universes suck. <laughs> Our universe is the best. That is kind of how I feel about the other universes. They do yeah, seem exactly. I haven't even seen any of them. <laughs> Nationalism is a disease, but other universes can fuck right off. <laughs> And that is my final opinion. (laughs) (laughs) 
so Goku is trying to be responsible, which is like, way to be on the other side of it, Goku. This is how it feels all the time. He's like, we don't have time. And Frieza's like, oh, now we don't have time. <laughs> I want to fight for no reason. Who am I? Who am I? I'm you. That's what you sound like. <laughs> <laughs> My man doesn't want to fight because he's here with his tournament. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we know from Dragon Ball Z that when Freezer says something, it'll only take five minutes. You're going to be there for a long, it's long so time. So long. <laughs> yeah, he, it was a full episode of Dragon Ball Z amount of time. <laughs> Frieza has a flashback for his time in delightful anime hell with fields and fairies. And he's like, during my time in the cocoon, I did kegels in there until I became so strong. I got a blue fist and a red fist. How Big. do you like this palette? <laughs> Let's swap. <laughs> big, big, big canon update too on Frieza Hell is uh, not only is it all like fluffy animals and like Playboy Bunny ladies, there's another thing that I noticed in this one is that some of the fluffy animals have multiple ear piercings, which means that Frieza is one of those freaky dudes who's like, I hate women with green hair. <laughs> <laughs> They're like poison dart frogs. They're trying to warn you. <laughs> oh my God. I love that rant. I love that rant so much because clearly some woman with blue hair tried to put her pinky finger up that dude's asshole one time and he just like <laughs> lost his mind his whole world shattered he couldn't deal with it I'm like god bless her send her a gift bag I just ugh. I'm like yes I like purposely get shitty haircuts so people won't talk to me so please spread that rumor around maybe Freezer's just jealous because he can't get piercings because his ears don't even have lobes he doesn't his, have lobes. I brought it up in this episode because you get a lot of really nice shots of Frieza's fucking weird ears. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think goes on inside those ears? Do you think it's just a hole straight through to the other side? Like, is it does it bend right immediately? I've no idea. I, to be honest, I'm surprised that you could look at the facial animations in this episode without just retching because they look so bad. They spent all the budget on that shot at the end of them punching each other and now it's just like... That's what I said. I'm like, was this a clip from a movie? What happened? I will verify Katie did say this. Thank I have you, an Alex. alternate understanding of why the minions have ears, earrings, which is an important canon update. Uh, the an alternate uh, idea would be that Frieza reads New York Post and thinks that the little animals are in a gang and he hates that <laughs> <laughs> he just reads conservative newspapers and i was like they're ruining this country <laughs> they're an ms-13 style gang <laughs> so frieza's like let me show you this new iphone upgrade i got and he shoots off his beams and the beams are like wiggy waggly uh licorice peel and pull uh little ropes they're that, homing and they and, zigzag yeah and they like sew a nice uh a, a thread between all the guys and they all die and they, it's uh, it's cute. And Goku is so mad. He's killing the faceless thugs. <laughs> He's completely both sidesing the interdimensional assassins, and it's really annoying. I think he's more ear take. He's like, oh, only I get to make irresponsible decisions. What's going on here? And Frieza has that great line about, like, technically you killed everyone in their dimension by suggesting a tournament. Oh, yeah, so he does not He's completely your right. <laughs> It's like, what's the difference? Like, you've already condemned that, like, genocide isn't even a strong enough word for what you've done, Goku. Like, we need a, it's like omnicide, but like multiple omnicide. The only ethical uh, end of Dragon Ball is Goku is like shot into space. I keep saying at the end of the Tournament of Power, Vegeta needs to put him down like old Yeller. Tell him to think about all the beams and bowls of rice they had and just shoot him in the back of the head with a gun, which yeah. we found out is the only thing that can kill. Guns are more powerful than beams. It's canon. Um, Guns are his kryptonite. They're cra <laughs> Guns are most people's kryptonite. <laughs> Oh my god, my kryptonite, chocolate, and an AR-17. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Freeze is like really on one, and he does this really cool Fist of the North Star move where he just like points at a bunch of dudes' heads and they just straight up explode, and that, that was, was pretty, pretty sick. sick. It ruled all the way. 100% ruling. Uh, and then the uh, edge lords are like, "Oh, we fucked up. We did not think about our strategy." Yeah, Let's actually, we were just kidding about this ambush. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kidnap the old woman and that cute ghosty friend. And they're like, uh, "Goku and Frieza have no moral compass," so they're like, "That's fine." Uh, Doesn't Goku stop them? Yeah, Goku's like, "Hey, knock it off, Frieza and friends." <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone roughhousing? He keeps saying, "It's not a gym. You can't be roughhousing." <laughs> 
<laughs> and then while Goku is weirdly on his high horse lecturing Frieza, which, by the way, bad luck. Uh, Come on. A sneaky doggy friend uh, has a pocket beam behind right. his back. He's hiding a beam. What's that beam? I hope there's a cutaway to explain what the fuck it is. <laughs> All beams should have a cutaway. You know, That's our <laughs> official uh, preference as a podcast. You know what I need more? More characters and more like canon updates. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. want to remember any of the names. I want to yeah. be overwhelmed with information. <laughs> Especially if it's like a cartoon dog out of a Disney cartoon who we will definitely not remember and yeah. won't come back to the show. I want to know everything about him. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he as a dog man? <laughs> I was intrigued by the idea that you can just carry beams around with you, though. That was so, so yeah, weird. right. <laughs> For the fans who don't watch the show, which Joe Strix, what's up, baby? Uh, he, they go to the was it Universe fucking nine? oh nine, nine. yeah nine. They go nine. and they're nine. like, hey, dog man, we need you to kill Vegeta, and he's like, yeah, I love doing that, and. Uh, <laughs> The destroyer's like, here you go, have some destroyer beam. And he's like, thank you, which means you can just, yeah, it's like, um, it must be like mercury where it's a liquid and a gas, but also solid depending on how you... (laughs) Yeah, it's a non-Newtonian substance. Where does he put it? (laughs) Where does he put the beam? When he when he when he gets on the flight to Universe Seven, are they not like you can't take this? You can't, you can't. <laughs> this is a, you can't. No, there's a sign with like a beam with a line through it. If you, you can't have that. Beam it's got to go in the hold. bag. You can put it in your checked luggage. <laughs> sir. So, but I'm already like almost at the limit. It's gonna you know, destroy all my socks. <laughs> have you tried putting the beam in your inventory? Are you over encumbered? <laughs> You're gonna have to drop some herbs and like a knife. <laughs> yeah, I love just, like, eating like five wheels of cheese. I'm like putting this beam. In the yeah, tree. thank you. I'm like sweating. Oh, you know what it is though? Is he gets the beam and he has to empty some of his inventory because it's full, and then just a bunch of bones fall on the ground. Because he's a dog. Because he's a dog. That's the idea. Is it turns out this guy is a dog. You're like a bunch of tennis balls, and you're like, you don't, yeah. you don't eat all of these. You found this in the park. You, you need one ball. <laughs> One ball. <laughs> anyway, they go back, and he's like, watch out, I got this death beam Frieza, and he throws it at him. Frieza blows it up all snickety snick. Guess Wait. what? Naruto ass move, fake beam. Fake, fake beam. beam. Fake beam. Mm. He has another one. Folks, he did a big old fake out, snatched the wig, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> and that's T. <laughs> I'm going to kill you! I, I think it's to, tea. I just need to like, I'm going to like bring you guys and just teach you how to use these phrases properly. You're making me crazy. Snatch the wig was pretty close, actually. I just, oh, you make me nuts. I love you. If I haven't known you since I was like 11, then this would be a problem. And you get grandfathered in because I like you. Hooray! <laughs> I love the grandfather clause. <laughs> I'm all about learning expressions and how to use them. <laughs> Would it be so unreasonable for like Dragon Ball to give us one line where the dog gets hit with something and goes, Bow wow? I think it would be funny if I hit with something and goes, Bow wow, and then Goku, who we all know likes current slang, goes, Yippee, yippee, yippee. That's true. Goku's cool now. <laughs> Goku's seen all of Will Smith's movies. <laughs> it works in catchphrases whenever he can. Um, oh, it's also official canon that when the Destroyer gives him the ball, he says, this ball has never not killed anything. It's the number one killing people ball. <laughs> Yeah. I have a theory it gets diluted when it's passed around because we all know Beerus is like, it just erases you. But as we learn, this so, one. <laughs> so okay. what happens is there's a double fake out and then all of a sudden Frieza gets beamed with the death beam and he is freaking out. We think he's getting eviscerated. Best scene in the whole show so far as far and as I'm concerned. <laughs> yes, he yeah, it's Frieza's getting his ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, he pauses, he goes, that, my friends, is acting. And everyone's like, oh! Oh, all clap. the life's a stage, bitch! Like <laughs> now, now, Ollie, as an actor, uh, can <laughs> can you tell us about what 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 kind of technique would you be using to convince somebody that you were being destroyed by the murder beam? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd probably use some uh, some uh, emotional recall and remember times that I've been beamed in the past, uh, and just kind of 
just sort of focus on uh, on the memory of, of being hit by uh, by destroyer energy. Mm. Um, I might use uh, like an animal study. If there's an animal that particularly gets hit by a lot of beams, <laughs> then I might try and like embody that animal's physicality for half an hour and let that in- influence performance. But mainly, I just try and like stay relaxed and stay loose out there and respond to my scene partner who was throwing the beam. Now, based on Frieza's performance, what school of acting do you think he hails from? Um, I think given the amount of beams Frieza has been hit by. And given his obviously very deep-seated psychological issues, uh, I'd say he's definitely American Method School. Like, he's definitely <laughs> using that like dangerous, dangerous levels of getting into it. My yeah. man loves Jared Leto. I was about to say. He's <laughs> <laughs> just like sending rats to people on set, like just being a dick. And everyone's like, if he wasn't a space alien, he wouldn't be able to get away with that. Like, if, if it was like, a, if it was like a, a black woman doing that kind of act, like she would not, like you wouldn't, wouldn't get hired again because he's a space tyrant. He's just allowed to get away with it (laughs) if he wasn't the king of sin this would be a big problem (laughs) you know freeze has been around for a while but like why is he so revered anyway honestly (laughs) he's tired yeah uh all right where the fuck are we okay so yeah he fakes everyone out and then he smooshes the beam down into a little bitty pocket size beam and he just walks around with it like it's a cake on a platter yeah that ruled because it had circled his whole body and it's a destroyer beam and like katie was saying every time someone gets hit with the destroyer beam it erases them <laughs> except this one that takes 45 minutes and just zaps you yeah. <laughs> for a while <laughs> and then frieza is just like popping off he's shooting little holes in everybody being like i'm fucking you up and then goku Goku's- oh, he shoots a hole in the Bark Bark Doggy friend, and Goku <laughs> does the second best line where he goes, Awesome. <laughs> that was sick. That kickflip rule. <laughs> I think you could do it because I've seen you practicing on the rails and you've been eating shit, but that was sick. <laughs> Such an inappropriate reaction. <laughs> Uh, like Goku doesn't try and get anyone like medical attention or anything. <laughs> just, just watching it happen. He's really concerned for them too the whole time until he thinks it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then Goku goes into classic Goku where he's like, "Wow, Frieza, you've gotten so strong. That's really neat." And Frieza's like, "Yeah, I've been doing Kegels." And then uh, Go, he's like, "Goku, I think this is a setup." He's like, "Really?" I had no idea. And he's like, yeah, clearly they're trying to murder us. And Goku turns and goes, hey, you big meanies, don't murder me and my genocide friend. And that's when Frieza just like, oh, my God, you're so stupid. And just puts him in the pink death bubble. Yeah, he puts, he uses the bubble on Goku, his best friend. <laughs> wig snatch. <laughs> now that's wig snatch. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. I'll be around gay people later today. Um, be fine. Also, Goku does not immediately die when he is hit with the destroyer beam. He just sticks at it and screams for a while, which means official canon update guns are stronger than the destroyer beam. You can kill Goku immediately with a gun. <laughs> they did it on the show. Counterpoint this is a different universe destroyer, so you might not be as strong as Beerus. And also, we know it's a passed around beam. Ooh. So, what know. if it's like uh, the weaker your universe is overall in your fighter level, whatever it was that they were talking about a couple episodes ago with like, you you know, like what if the, the weaker your fighter level is as a universe, the weaker your destroyer is because it takes less power to destroy things in that universe. Well, I get also when you touch a beam, you're touching everyone who that beam has, has touched. <laughs> pay attention in health class <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of like when you take a rip off a bong and then you spit it you like breathe it into someone else's oh, mouth oh yeah shotgun yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. it's like it's kind of that but you're really just trying to make out yeah with this oh, is mostly man. so you can kiss <laughs> oh wait can I tell a quick uh, crusty Jeremy era story please oh okay uh, so from around the time of uh, the catnip story and the, the foot story and all those stories uh, there there was a while where my friends and I were just shotgunning every single hit we took off of anything. Well, because you guys were doing communal living. Yeah. <laughs> it's a communal living situation. You share everything you have, and sometimes that means you shotgun every Jesus. hit so that you can double up your your ability to get high off of the same amount of weed. It's also so you can get really good at kissing. Yes, also <laughs> get really good at kissing your friends. 
uh, so my official question for this interesting new canon update is, um, did you ever shotgun catnip? Yes. Okay. That's yeah. What I wanted to know specifically. <laughs> <laughs> you passed somebody else, cat. <laughs> Which again doesn't get you high. It doesn't do anything to you. <laughs> it makes you more like a cat. So when people send you texts, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> well, the thing is that you you get so used to after a while, you get so used to the uh, the act of like taking the hit and then shotgunning it to the person right. next to you that even when you're on catnip and you know that it's not doing anything, yeah. you still just like Pavlovian just sure. kind of move over to the next person and do it. No, Pavlov was dogs. Pavlov was dogs yeah, Pavlov. <laughs> Pavlov's dogs. i learned all about this in sociology <laughs> on the shotgunning catnip chapter <laughs> what the fuck are you doing meanwhile <laughs> they finish the stage everybody and it's a giant dreidel mm-hmm. and Zeno cool. loves it and they both roll on it great important yep. scene the god of heaven is on a concrete spiral rolling and going <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and that is the whole scene. <laughs> Back. In- no, he gives he gives uh, Weese's dad a piece of candy. Oh yeah, like, that's well, true. well done. That's right, yes. This is your reward from God. Is like a <laughs> sweet you get at the dentist. Well, I created this, and I'd like you to have one. <laughs> Old men love butterscotch suckers. Mm. <laughs> so uh, back to the fight zone. Frieza talks a lot as Goku fights the Death Beam, and. Uh, Frieza shoots up at the little guy's mafia style and is like, let me call your bosses. And the bosses are waiting. They're like, are they calling? When are they going to call? And then, surprise, it's Frieza. Not who you wanted to talk to on the telephone. Oh, it's Frieza. I know. (laughs) Tell him I'm not here. (laughs) Frieza's like... All right, guys, you tried to kill me, and they're all gaslighting him. Like, oh, no, we just lent him that beam. We don't know what he did with that beam. (laughs) <laughs> I lent him that beam to take to the doctor <laughs> because he's sick. Are you telling me? This is awful. When I see Dog Man next, <laughs> he is going to get a long talking to. He is going to get a rolled up newspaper. I'm going to rub his nose in that beam. <laughs> these are medicinal beams. I have a prescription for them. <laughs> I have glaucoma. I need these beams. <laughs> Freeze is like, cut the shit. I have a proposition for you. I'm going to kill Goku because it's what I've dreamed of my whole life. It's easy and it's fun. Um, And I'm going to join your team for the tournament. And we're just going to blow up Universe 7 because they suck. And uh, one of the Kais in Universe 9 is like, isn't there anything you value? And he's like, I'm Frieza. Are you new? (laughs) (laughs) I value being given coal on Christmas. I'm a very paper thin character. <laughs> He's like, my whole thing is, I don't care. And so, the Kai and the Destroyer of Universe Nine get into a, a, a philosophical argument on how much you can trust a turncoat. They're having a debate. They're processing, really communicating with each other. While Frieza literally rolls his eyes at the telephone. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm standing right here. Like, put me on mute at least. No. <laughs> they have a line that even says, once a cheater, always a cheater, which kind of makes you think about, like, what is this about? Yeah. Mm. Listen, they need to talk about non-monogamy and, and communication. <laughs> yeah, that beam, everyone's touched it. You were right, Ollie. <laughs> You gotta think about that. I mean, as long as everyone's being safe with the beams and like being mature and communicating about like who's beaming who, I, I don't see it's a problem with it. Like, it just relies on you just being an adult, which clearly the, the Kai and the Destroyer of Universe Nine can't can't really handle. If we charter our contract first, we can open our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> too late they talk too long daddy's home we and Beerus show up and they're like what the fuck is going on I leave for 10 minutes you can't do one thing you had one job Goku go get your Frieza <laughs> meanwhile Goku's like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> he's still he's in still the beam being tortured <laughs> they, uh, I do love that Frieza literally goes party's over <laughs> uh oh mom's home <laughs> 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 And then, so, they lecture them. They're like, you know, I don't, how much can we trust this guy? We have to save the universe. And Goku's like, I wanted this. I wanted him to hit me. It's my fault. I should have spilled juice in the hall. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do 
Is or, it doing Adam's yeah, song reference? Yeah, majorly, majorly triggered by that. Like, ugh. It yeah. was. It was like, I want to send Goku a copy of Codependent No More. I really want to <laughs> just help him out. I'm like, maybe the root of all his childish behavior is he really doesn't know how to draw the line between love and punches, which we all know is true. Frieza wouldn't hurt me. He loves me. <laughs> you Goku, just... you go on r slash abuse interrupted man. There's a whole community that can help you out. <laughs> hey Goku, I'm a doctor. It seems like Frieza does not have your best interests in mind. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't understand, Doctor. When you really get to know Frieza like I do, he really has plans and thoughts and feelings. I just feel so bad for Frieza because his dad was King Cold, and so he has like this whole history behind him. And I just want to help him out. You can't do that, Goku. This is about you. <laughs> but this is someone... about your decisions. <laughs> Goku, like, so Frieza's not. A a healthy being <laughs> <laughs> he needs to work through his shit on his own look at the other people he's beamed and ask yourself would he beam you if he loved you <laughs> but when someone's so bad un- likes you it's special <laughs> <laughs> anyway so Beerus is like shut up and uh, but then you know, it was really refreshing to see responsible Goku, but we only know that can exist so long. And he's yeah. like, Whis, I know we have to go save every universe, but here's the thing. I want to fight. And so they do a little scrimmage. Um, for no, no reason. reason. For no reason except that. Except this is where all the animation budget for this episode yeah. went. <laughs> It's just like it. It feels like this whole thing is just the two of them getting like really horny for a fight, and then this is just like this is literally just the the money shot at the end, right? It's just they punch each other and they fall down, and they're both like, (gasps) (sighs) 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 like in Rocky, they both say at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if this is the money shot, that explains why all the rest of the shots were discount because like the like Weese's face is weird, like Goku's face is weird, Frieza's nose changes size like really weirdly. It's like. There's a lot of like Steve Race, Steve Racer, Speed Racer moves where it's just like a <laughs> Steve Racer, <laughs> Steve Steve Racer. It is Steve Racer in the fact that it's like bottom the shelf cereal. <laughs> I'm sorry, kids. We couldn't afford Speed Racer. We got you this Steve Racer. It's oh, just as good. Can I, can I pull something over from the Two Minutes podcast? Please. From a while ago, Katie thought that Zoot Suit Riot was Zoot Suit Ryan. <laughs> Listen, I'm a delightful scamp with quirky things who have poor hearing and a learning disability. (laughs) If you want a quirky girl, really what you're signing up for is mostly misunderstanding lyrics and a snake. (laughs) Give Katie her wig back. (laughs) Give me my wig back. Um, I've totally lost my train of thought. Um, They punch each other in the face. They punch each other in the face. And uh, Frieza goes on this inner monologue about how he's been jerking it to the idea of Goku's death for a while. And then they punch each other. They do that thing where they punch each other in the face at the same time. And then it like time slows down. Yep. Uh, That's because they have a head injury now. Yeah. And so (laughs) Goku goes on some rant about how he's been training and he's like... Because I think he's really butthurt that Frieza got that first punch in on him last episode. Oh, yeah, because he's like, oh, you punched me. I love punching. It's kind of my whole thing. (laughs) (laughs) My uh, my personality is I punch. (laughs) And you were to punch me first. The rules they have of the scrimmage, which makes it make less sense than the fact that they're having a scrimmage before they go to this tournament they have to fight in anyway, is that whoever gets hit first loses the scrimmage. So they both... Punch each other at the same time. So everyone wins. <laughs> everyone wins. <laughs> they pass out, and then the narration starts. So the stage is finished. Fucking our And pal- all the world is a stage, and the stage is a stage. <laughs> and <laughs> Jared, we're ready for the stage. <laughs> Jared looks at his fucking uh, oh yeah we got a we got a nice shot of Jared. And uh, oh, you guys uh, ready for a fight? What's the football song? Are you guys ready for some fighting? <laughs> you know, the football song. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what song. But but just before the episode ends, they beam back to Capsule Corp, and we see Krillin and Vegeta react to the fact that Freezer is there. <laughs> and we as, the, we as the audience remember that two people on this team have been murdered by Freezer <laughs> yeah. in front of Gohan, who was eight, and Piccolo also got, like, beamed through the tit right in front of him. So, like... like 
this it, it, you want your team at the tournament of power to be like emotionally ready and to feel safe and to like be ready to do their best work. And Goku has just like not considered that at all. Like, even from a tactical point of view, Goku's like, a like v- Vegeta was raised by this guy who murdered his father. Like it's so <laughs> Goku is just so emotionally irresponsible with his team members. It's infuriating. He just exposes all these vulnerable Gohan communities <laughs> <laughs> to this really triggering alien. <laughs> Also, the way they showed up and everyone's reaction to it really reminded me of Brokeback Mountain, which is what we were talking about before the episode started. <laughs> oh, I came back with Frieza. All you look forward to is your trip with Frieza. <laughs> I'm here for you all year. <laughs> and they don't have time to do any like warm up exercises or like trust exercises before the show begins. They just have to like work as a unit straight away. Like they should play like Zip Zap Boing or something on the yeah. way just to like just and to warm go- up. Go it's been like working so hard to come up with like plans and uh, oh is it called zip zap boing in the uh, where you're from yeah yeah it's called what? zip zap zop in america that's crazy boing is better i think yeah zop isn't a sound <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's not a sound people don't say zop there's never a comic book where something says zop it's not a thing people say it's not a thing yeah Sorry, I just was reacting to yeah. your face turning into a fist, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> and bad that's DDR music plays. And that's the episode. We boogie back and uh all right. Out of uh seven Dragon Balls, Alex. <sighs> I'm gonna give it six Dragon Balls. This was a fantastic episode. There mm. were homing beams, more than two of them. There was treachery, most heinous and foul. Uh there was lots of <laughs> um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um sexual pathology. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and just Maximum Frieza, who is a villain of the highest degree. Mm. Six out of seven Dragon Balls. The o- only downside would be there wasn't uh, even more Frieza. Katie, out of seven Dragon Balls. Yeah, I'm going to go with Alex on this one. Six Dragon Balls. Um, You know, normally when a franchise brings back a previous character to spice it up, I don't like it. I feel pandered to, and I feel it's transparent but man my boy frieza she's really delivering the lines i love a frieza like poetry monologue uh it felt fun i was having fun despite how janked up the animation was yeah if frieza did next top model he would win because he has so many talents <laughs> and he smizes like and crazy. he smizes <laughs> ollie out of seven dragon balls uh, this episode automatically earns one point from me by dint of the fact that Master Roshi is not in it. Yep. Uh, he's the worst character. He's the reason I can't recommend the show to anyone ever, so it gets a point because he's not in it. And he made all those uh, movies There in were the good 80s. beams. <laughs> Freezer's good. Golden Golden Trump Tower Cheesecake Factory Freezer is interesting <laughs> as well. Uh, I think six or so. I get like six out of seven Dragon Balls. Folks. I'm going to break with the rest of you guys. I think I agree with everything everybody has said, but I think there is a point that's being left off by everybody, which is for that one above shot of Frieza flying at everybody with his wiggly (laughs) ass tail. (laughs) And it wiggles so violently in the wind. It's because he's happy. (laughs) It's wagging. I I can't in good conscience give this anything but seven out of seven Dragon Balls. It it makes a lot of sense, and I see where you're coming from. It was a really good episode. It was a great episode. So, Ali, uh, because we gathered seven out of seven Dragon Balls, we get to summon the eternal dragon, Shenron. All right, Shenron! (laughs) I think I see where this one's going. (laughs) Shenron, did you just get off the the loop? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was minding the gap when I noticed one of you blokes needed a wish in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, British Shenron. <laughs> oh, gobsmacker. Oh, fuck. 
So, Ollie, as you know, uh, when we uh, summon the Eternal Dragon Genron, you get to uh, make one wish uh, that will be possibly maybe granted or maybe just a joke. Uh, British Genron, I have watched so much Dragon Ball Z in my life that I have internalized a lot of unhealthy ideals about the uh, about what masculine body should be. So I wish to have a, a better understanding of a healthy male body. Instead, I will give you a second queen. <laughs> the greatest gift of all. Hierarchy is the natural order I'm leaving. <laughs> Toodaloo! <laughs> 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 Good lord. Okay. Oh, brilliant. Fun, I was so enamored with the queen we already had. It's great <laughs> yeah. news that we have too. What if the second one is just a carbon copy of the first one, like <laughs> Zeno and <in> the show? <laughs> <laughs> Same age and everything. She's like the queen from 10 minutes in the future. <laughs> And like similarly, like Zeno is a figurehead, but isn't really like very involved. And to be honest, probably shouldn't be around at all. <laughs> Gets a lot of press for real non-statements. <laughs> um, okay, so this is uh, this is the part of the show where we would usually read an email from a listener. Uh, but this week, uh, we thought we would have a little bit of fun because we have a uh, YouTube philosopher, Ollie, on. Uh, we we put out a call on Twitter to to ask people for their balls deep questions about oh. the Dragon Ball franchise. We finally got to use that jingle again. <laughs> Fuck it. So, Ollie, this is from a friend of the show, Joel Dreyer. He says... One of the greatest struggles of mankind is the contradictory idea of having a god who is both loving and yet still imposes suffering on the world. However, Dragon Ball offers a world where you can beam God. <laughs> what does this say about the nature of divinity and man's relation to it? I mean, I wish somebody would beam Zeno because, like, Ze <laughs> Zeno is the most terrifying possible answer to, to Pascal's wager. Like, I imagine somebody who, like, who really believes and, like, worships Zeno and really does it all and then, like, finally, like, gets to meet him and he's just, like... He, it's not even that Zeno like hates people. It's not even that you find out that God hates you, which would at least give you somebody to like push back against. It's just that he's completely indifferent and a fool. So I mean, uh, to be honest, I think the fact that you can beam God in the Dragon Ball universe is is truly liberatory because like somebody needs to beam that little shit. <laughs> uh, this is from user at fraudulent ways. The trolley problem through the lens of whether or not it is moral to blow up the moon to save the planet from a giant adolescent space ape. Now, what is the trolley problem? Oh, that's with the switch where you can save the train or save the person on the track. But right? in this delightful version, it's a trolley. <laughs> it's when you're I late in England. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I so uh, this is like a reference to Piccolo blowing up the moon, I guess. Um, well, I, he could have just cut Gohan's tail off. But then I suppose he wouldn't. He didn't know, did he? We would. But it would have come to the same thing anyway. So uh, I don't know. I think ethically, it's it's very dubious anyway. It, it, to be honest, it was already an ethically dubious situation by dint of having kidnapped Gohan into the wilderness. <laughs> I feel like let's let's talk about that before we get into like blowing up the moon. Let's not let Piccolo get off the hook for that. It's wrong to blow up the moon because the moon is a beautiful woman. <laughs> 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 She's more than just a rock. She's 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 got it all. I just here's the thing. He does kidnap Gohan, but then he ends up being the only good dad in the show. So it's very complicated because it was probably like a Stockholm situation. But now he's it's like reverse Stockholm. Yeah, isn't it? I don't know. I like the tides though. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty key thing that we need on this planet, the tides, and, uh, you know, what else are you going to look up at as though it were a big pizza pie? Almost nothing. <laughs> Rare is it that a star looks like a pizza pie. Yeah, you're going to have to look at the sun, and that's going to hurt. And that's amore. <laughs> Wait till you get to GT and people are turning into giant apes by looking at Earth. Ooh, oh, we're almost there. Spoiler. Spoiler, Spoilers. Ollie. Spoiler on a show that was on in 1995. Get, get me back on for that one. <laughs> uh, okay, so then uh, one more is a lot of people have various versions of this, but I feel like uh, this will be a nice way to tie in another jingle that we use on this show. Uh, from I Stand Witchy Women, Goku, Vegeta, Toxic Masculinity, Discuss. Masculinity is a prison. 
I mean, I feel like that's the theme of our entire podcast. Yeah, we have like 90-something <laughs> episodes about this, but uh, I mean... It's not as on display in this episode as it is with him and Frieza. Ollie, I'm interested on if you have any hot takes that we have not covered on the show. I mean, other than just to to ground it in 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 theory, like just a toxic masculinity. Like the it's, there's a philosopher called Simon Critchley who talks about um uh, there being an inner critical voice that's central to the structure of having a mind. And I you know when I hear about things like toxic masculinity and especially with somebody like Vegeta, I think that that voice has almost been like colonized in a way uh, by somebody else's perception of him. Like he's unable to think about himself except in the terms that Frieza sets for him, which is why it's such like a traumatic event when Goku kills Frieza and he's like finally set free but like condemned to be free. So I think there's all kinds of like why wild shit going on there in terms of theory of mind which again is just why it's incredibly irresponsible for Goku to have brought this, this <laughs> freaking murderer to, without like without even he's not even team captain Gohan is the team captain that's Gohan's call like get anyone else <laughs> I hadn't even thought about the fact that he goes completely over Gohan's head with this. Goku is the shadow it's chancellor a, of the team. He's just like, you're the team captain, Gohan. Well done, you. But I'm going to make all the irresponsible decisions and completely knacker the whole group. <laughs> Gohan, we want you to join the UN, a place where everyone has an equal vote. <laughs> But I do whatever the fuck I want because I'm goddamn Goku. It stresses me out because Gohan's done so much work on himself and like Goku destroyed that in like 20 seconds. Oh, he knocks him down. He's so healthy at the beginning of this show and I know that we make fun of him, but like I feel really bad. I feel like we bullied Gohan into... I know this is already written, but I feel like we bullied Gohan into... Yeah, we... we're part of the problem. We are. It's time for an accountability process. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we do that, <laughs> let's uh, let's get into some plugs. Katie. You can find me at Twitter at, at Katie Rose or on Instagram at oh hello Katie Rose. And I actually am doing stand up again because I have went to therapy. So please. <laughs> uh, I have a bunch of shows coming up in February, so please look out for those. Alex. Follow me on Twitter at Patak Jokes and come out to Cherry Tree Bar in Brooklyn every Sunday for Bad News. It's a comedy show at 7, except for the day of the Super Bowl because I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Ollie. My name is Ollie Thorne. You can find me on YouTube. I run a show called Philosophy Tube. Uh, I have a video on Steve Bannon, which will be coming out before Valentine's Day, which is going to be amazing. Romantic. So please do check that out. Please Ooh. view Steve Bannon, Frieza or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. I actually, incidentally, after we got that email a couple weeks ago uh, comparing Jeff Bezos to Frieza, I've been working on a thing uh, to put on a YouTube about uh, Amazon and Long Island City, and I have been uh, collecting as many lewd photos photos of Frieza as I can find for every time we reference Jeff Bezos. <laughs> He's just going to come out after the divorce be like, now I am golden Bezos. <laughs> I hired a second personal trainer. <laughs> I've been in a cocoon for years imagining what it would be like to kick Bill Gates in the nuts. <laughs> the cocoon helps you sleep in the Amazon warehouse. <laughs> He's never set foot in an Amazon warehouse. Uh, he flies around in the same little chair. He's <laughs> in a little chair. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Jeremy Thunder. And uh, incidentally, I'm also doing stand up comedy now. I don't know why. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for this week. Join us next week. Super! 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 Super. Super.